Hello, I'm Ian and this is Thinking Out Loud. Not long ago we had to dig up our backyard because the sewer had become blocked by a tree root. Come on, let me tell you what I thought. One of the things I love about my job is that sometimes I get to see a sunset twice in one day. First the sun sets while I'm still on the ground, then we take off and we fly and chase the sun and depending on the direction and time of day we can catch the sun up and then see it set all over again. And a sunset or sunrise at 30,000 feet is quite spectacular. Today I've been reading Ephesians chapter 4 and there's a good bit to chew on in that chapter. Lots of interesting thoughts but one in particular stands out and that's to do with the sun setting and we'll get to that in just a moment. Right at the beginning of the chapter though there's a little phrase there that speaks of leading a life worthy of your calling. You're better than that. What do you think you're doing? My mum used to have a way of looking at me and saying I don't expect that from you or you weren't brought up that way and I can still see her and hear her saying that to me now and I knew that if I didn't shape up and deviate from what I was up to I would be in some serious trouble later. Lead a life worthy of the one you represent is kind of what Paul's saying here in Ephesians isn't it? But verse 2 gives me the clue that I'm looking for. Always be humble and gentle be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Quite a number of things would be a whole lot better if we just applied those three words, wouldn't they? Gentle, humble, patient. Can you imagine? Later on in the chapter we read, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Over the years I've heard a lot of my friends say they apply that principle to their lives. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. But why does it work? Does it work? What's it all about? Surely if I'm angry with, say, Hillary, my wife, wouldn't it be better to just let it be and it'll go away and in the morning we can move on with our lives? There's something about it though. Here in our yard we've long since given up trying to grow anything like a garden. Flowers are eaten by the rabbits who dig huge burrows and when I say huge I mean this kind of huge. One of these days I'll have to have a look down there and see if they've moved out. I haven't seen them for a while. And what the rabbits don't eat the deer have for supper and I'll show you more pictures of the deer that live out here and make themselves at home one of these days too. It would be easier in some ways just to let the yard go and not try taming it. At the back of the yard there is a sinkhole that slowly got bigger over the years as the ground settles and I guess so do all the pipes and services running under there. The sewage pipe that takes all the gunk away from the house runs right under that sinkhole and every time I cut the grass I would hit a tree root not unlike this one. Over time the lawn mower would shave a little bit off and then a little bit more and I guess in the end the tree decided to stick down a deeper root to get away from my um, erratic mowing. I feel a bit weird saying a tree deciding to do something but that's how it seems. Eventually the the root got into the sewage pipe through a little crack that had developed where two pipes joined together and snuck in, found some moisture and kind of liked it in there I guess and then grew. Time passed and it grew some more more time passed and it grew some more and in the end it completely blocked the pipe. Come on let's go have a look it may still be out there. Yep this old pipe's been laying out here for quite some time I must get rid of it but look it's completely blocked. Well just like that tree root anger when it first starts is just a little itty bitty root that really doesn't have any impact it's inconsequential you could say but it gives a foothold to something much worse later. Dealing with it early on would have been a much, much better idea for us if we had run a cutter through the pipe and then repaired the small damage. We wouldn't have had to have dug the whole yard up to, to find the problem. 
don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. That's the author here saying, deal with it early on. Don't let anger take over. And there's another problem. Look at this next verse. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so your words will be an encouragement to those that hear them. So that's how that foothold thing works. When you're angry, do you really want your words to encourage and build up or are you trying to sting and jab and hurt? And it's probably the latter. Letting anger fester and stew overnight isn't going to make it better. In fact, the gunk is just going to get built up and not be able to flow away. Just as Paul advises in verse 26, don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Unlike me, when I fly, most people don't get to see two sunsets in one day. Whenever I see those two sunsets on the same day, I'm always reminded of this passage and reminded to deal with things quickly and early. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Settle those angry thoughts before they take root, before they have a chance to clog everything up. I found God's advice to be very helpful in my own life, and I'm sure you will in yours. Whenever I see a second sunset, it's always a great reminder. This has been Thinking Out Loud, and if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe and tell your friends. And if you click that bell icon thingy, then the next time I post a video, you'll be notified. Goodbye.